Good morning. I missed a couple. Oh, no, I didn't. Good morning, good morning. How is everyone? It's our first day of the stitch along. And I'm so excited. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So as always, um, I go live at 10 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Um, this time, the weekends, I'm going to do one video, I think on Saturday, and it will be a little bit more advanced. So it'll just be something that you can add on to uh, your stitch along if you want to. So um, the reason that I'm doing, oh, I've got a little thing there. The reason I'm doing that is because a couple people have said that they really would like to do some like new and interesting techniques and stitches, but other people and a lot of people, this is their very first stitch along. So I kind of want to cater to both the brand new people, but also people who've done all the other ones and maybe want to do a little bit more. So I'll add uh, one optional video. Wow. Lots of people up early in the States. Bleary eyed here in Washington, but excited for my first stitch along. Okay, I'm so excited too. Um, like always, a couple things. Number one, the videos are uploaded um, or saved to. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Stitch and Silver said my trace didn't work properly, so I'm already behind. Don't worry. And that's what my point is right now. So I'm going to quickly save them to IGTV just in case you want to go back like immediately. And then I'm hoping to get the video up by tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay? So, uh, on YouTube. So it takes about an hour to an hour and a half. I've explained it before, um, but I have to keep my phone on the screen on and on YouTube um, to upload it for the whole time. Um, so it does take a bit of time to do it. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit late, but the goal is to get it up by the next day's stitch long. Okay. So <clears throat> just know that I am trying to get them up as soon as possible, but I also like need my phone <laughs> for other things too. <laughs> um, so there's that. The other thing is please don't compare yourself to anyone else. For some people, this is their very first stitch along, which means that they've never done any stitching before ever, like maybe when they were in school, but not since then. Um, but for other people, they will have done a lot of stitch alongs before or other people's patterns before. Um, so everyone is starting at a different place. So you can't compare someone who's been doing it for 10 or 15 years to someone who's done it their very first time. It's really not fair on yourself. So just do your best. And as long as you know that you're doing your best, um, then you're good to go. And honestly, I love everybody's like, <laughs> you have no idea. Um, so you'll always get like a lot, loads of praise from me. Um, two more things. This is an eight inch hoop. I've got the eight inch one. If you used a smaller hoop, you will need to use less strands. So if I say six, you might have to use four or three. Hi, George. If you try and use the same amount of strands that I do on a smaller hoop, it's going to look really like bunched up and all your lines are going to be a lot thicker um, than mine. So real quick, I just have some black thread here. So this is six strands. And then this one here is three. So you, all you're doing is having a thinner line and that will be really, really, really helpful if you have a smaller hoop. Now, if you made it bigger, six strands is pretty much the biggest. Yeah, you can do 12, but you really don't need to do that. Um, so just stick with the six if you wanted to do like a 10 inch hoop or a 12 inch hoop. Um, you'll just have more area to cover. So if I say like, oh, this should be about, about five stitches here or six stitches here, you know, it's up to you. You might need 10 because it's even bigger. So just keep that in mind um, when you're picking your colors that you're going to need more of that color uh, than we might need. And the very last thing, I promise, I promise the last thing is colors. So what I've done is I've just taken a bunch of different colors um, from all my boxes and thrown them in one of these like um, paper trays for, that you get in like for office decor. 
and I've just put them in a very loose rainbow a type situation, and they're just all the bright colors that I could find. Okay? Some of them are lighter, um, but most of them are bright, meaning that they don't have a lot of gray in them, the color. Because when you look at the coral reefs, I just got some pictures of them on my iPad. They're all bright colors. They're all bright, colorful, and any color that you pick will be fine. Any color. They're all so different. Everyone's coral reefs are going to be different. So please don't freak out about colors. Oh, it's got turtle in it like we do. Yeah. So a couple people uh, messaged me last night and they were like, can you please tell us what we're going to do today? Because I really want to pick the right color and I really don't want to mess it up. Huns, it's okay. Like, don't, don't worry. Um, we're going to start on something really easy anyways, and that's just a regular. <laughs> Veronica says I got my sound up full as I'm sitting in the conservatory with rain pelting down. It looks like it's about to rain any second here, but you know what? The light's actually good, so I'm going to take it. Um, we're going to start with something really, really simple. And that's the back stitch. And then I'm going to show you how to whip the back stitch if you want to. And we're just going to do something really easy to start with, just to kind of like get your toes wet or get your fingers wet. What's it called? Dip your toes in it or something like that. <laughs> I get them all mixed up. Good morning, Mary. So what we're going to do is these um, lines that go here in the background. So there's one there. There's one that goes up like this one that goes up this way. Um, and you can use any color you want. So I've just taken a bunch of like browns because I think I'm going to use a brown. And I've got a bunch of different um, tones of brown, different shades. So you can do anything from just a straight up black line or you could use a darker brown, a little bit lighter. This one's got a bit of red or orange in it, you can tell. This one's more like a yellow or even green. This is just like a cream color if you wanted to try and match what color this is to like make it blend in together. And then I even have just like a, an off-white cream color. Um, any of these would work. You could use yellow. You could use an, any, any color. It really doesn't matter. Um, for this one, I'm thinking that I might use either this brown or this one. I think I might use this one because then the colors will really like pop off of it, you know, and you'll be able to see it a lot easier. So here we go. So I'm taking a length. And this is the thing that everyone always asks about how to thread your needle. And the easiest way that I can do it is you put it between your thing, finger and your thumb like this and you do this kind of action and you just put the eye over and you put it up through the needle. So I've obviously missed one there, but I was looking through the camera and not. Yeah. Now the other thing that people ask about is do you knot the end or do you leave it? Um, you can do either one. Some people leave a length on the back, like about this long, and then they come back later and they'll weave these in through all the other stitches. That's totally fine. Some people will use a waist knot and that's kind of similar, except you make a knot and you put it kind of over here or up here. It doesn't matter where. Um, and then when you start, you do your stitches Okay, and then afterwards, you'll cut that knot off, and then you can either do a knot on the end or you can weave it in on the back as well. Some people will do uh, like I do most of the time, and that's just make a little knot on the end, sometimes a double knot if you need to. Like if you're working with one or two strands, then you'll need to use a double knot because the strands might go through the fabric. Yeah. The other way, um, 
is to, and I'll show it to you when we use less strands. Um, the other way is to use less strands and then double it to get the amount of strands that you want. So for example, if we're using six strands right now, so you would use three strands. Let's see if I can do this real quick. And you put them together at the end and you keep this end as a loop. Yeah? And when you make your first stitch, you put your needle through and it kind of goes like this because I don't want black thread. So on the back, your first stitch will be like this where my fingers are is where the fabric will be. But I'll show you like properly when we use less strands. There's a lot to get through guys, okay? So what we're doing is we're doing these lines here and there is actually a little line behind there, but I've covered it up. Um, you can do it two ways. You can either start over here and go through all of these and then cover them up when we stitch them. Or you can just stitch the lines that you see, meaning you start here and you end here. Then you start here and you end here. It doesn't matter because we're going to cover up all of this stuff anyways. So again, just, it doesn't matter whatever you choose to do. So let me zoom in. And we'll do the easiest stitch of all time. It's the back stitch. So I'm going to actually start just right here. Not on this side. I'm start on this side. And then continue all the way until um, the end. So let's go. Now the thing with the back stitch is that you want to try and keep all of your stitches the same-ish length. You don't want one to be like this long and then the next one to be this long and then the next one to be really small and then the next one to be really big. You want to try and keep them about the same length. So what that length is, is up to you. Some people like longer stitches. Some people like shorter stitches. For this, we've got a very nice gradual um, like curve. So it goes down a little bit and then up a little bit and down a bit again. So if we did really long stitches, like one straight stitch here, we wouldn't get that curve effect. So we want to make sure that we keep our stitches short enough that we can still get the curve without it looking like er, 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 er. So I'll make mine a little bit bigger. And we'll go back down through that same hole that we've just done. Oh, that sounds nice. Okay, and then up forward again. And back down through the hole. Up forward again. And back down through the hole. It's a very aggressive um, noise, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This fabric is so tight. <laughs> so like I said, I'm going to just keep going through this one. Obviously you can stop here if you want, go straight up to it. Yeah, and then, and then stop and then continue on the other side. If you want to, it's up to you. I'm going to just keep going and then just stitch over top of it. Some of you might be cringing like, no, don't do it. But it's okay. It'll be fine. Jamie T says, I love the noise. Me too. But you know what? It is quite aggressive. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. So this is one way to do the back stitch. There is another way. And, and I call it the thread saver, the thread saver way. I'm almost to the edge of the screen. Let me just move it over and then I'll show you. I'll show you on the next one. Let me start the next one on the other side. Now, as always, before you start stitching, even before you do your very first, first stitch, you need to make sure that your fabric is tight all the way around and you have no dips. You need to make a drum noise. It needs to be nice and tight. Ooh. 
Whoops. Okay, so this is how it looks when it's all done. We've just done that little ledge that all the little plants live on. Um, and notice that you can see every single stitch. One, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 all the way down. Um, a way to cover that up is to go back and whip each of the stitches. Now, I like doing this especially with light colored threads because if this was a dark colored thread, you would not see each of these stitches so significantly. You would literally, it would almost blend all together and it would become almost like one big long line. Whereas these ones, you can, you can tell that it's like one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 all the way down. So a way to whip it, so we've just gone down here, yeah, you can see. You're going to come up again at the end, and I'll zoom back in so you can see it a little bit better. You're going to come back up at the very, very end, yeah. And you're going to put your needle underneath each one of these stitches. Now, it doesn't matter if you go down this way or up this way, but you're not going to go through the fabric. You're just going to slide your needle underneath each one of these stitches. And this is going to whip them and make it so that you don't see all of these lines. So all you're doing really is making thread go over these uh, stitch separations, I guess I could call it. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go up, because I think for me that'll be easier. So you're gonna slide it under, yeah, like this. So once you pick a way, whether it's the up going down, or sorry, up going down, or down going up, you have to stick with that way. You can't now go down, or up going down. I'm going to confuse y'all, aren't I? So once you pick your direction, you have to keep that same direction. So I picked down going up, and we're just going to keep that going all the way under each and every stitch. Okay. I think we're getting your rain, Veronica. Just a little side note, I had six tomato plants and all of them were growing really big and lovely until all of this wind came and one of them got snapped off and the other two have got a very, very, very big lean on them. So what we've done today is the back stitch first and then right now we are whipping it to make the whipped back stitch. So let me zoom out now. Now you can see that it literally looks like it's just like twisted around. Yeah. You can see that it's really like loose and you can tell that it's like that. You're just going to give this whipped thread a little tug like that. Not too hard. And I like to go back on the curves and just make them a little bit curvy, I guess. Yeah, and then right back down where you started. Be careful, because that's where our knot was. Yeah, and that's it. That's the back stitch, and then the whipped back stitch. And you're gonna get this like twisted kind of look to it. And then you just do a little knot on the end. A lot of people ask about the knots. This is what I do. I just make a loop like that, lift it up and put the needle up under the, the loop. And you hold the thread close to the fabric and you just pull. And then with your finger, you can uh, push it down as far as it can go. I'm also a fan of the double knot at the end as well. Some people will just weave it back and forth through here, that's fine too. It's up to you. So this is what we have so far. Sorry. We're gonna repeat the same thing for this long one here, and then this one here, okay? Through these big ones, I'm going to avoid them because they're quite large, and I'm just gonna do a little one here, 
and then keep going and then a little one here and then keep going okay so there we go easy peasy i told you today start you off simple Tomorrow Hope says, so cool. Thanks. My tomatoes are going off too. So I've got flowers on all of them except one. So the, if, if you know anything about tomatoes, um, I don't know anything about tomatoes, but this is what I've learned so far. Once they get the yellow flowers, that means that you're going to get tomatoes there. Okay. So if you get the flowers, then you get the tomatoes. So all of my plants have flowers except for one. And then um, one of my plants has two baby tomatoes. They're like that big and they're green. I'm so excited. It's like peak adulting, you know, when you get excited that like your tomatoes have flowers and that you're getting like you're gardening, you know. I don't know if my mom is still on here, but she's um, our bishop or maybe with some numbers, I think. I don't remember. But uh, we always tried to do like plants and stuff when we were little and they never worked. At least I don't remember if they worked, if they did. Good morning, Susanna. So this is all just experimentation, you know? Just to try your best. Make sure to feed them lots. Yeah, okay, so we I got this big red bottle. It's called Tomato Right? Tomato Right? Toma Right? Or something like that. <laughs> and you're supposed to feed them once a week or once every 10 days. Um, I've only done it a couple times only because, um, it's been so rainy. <sighs> I know this is the boringest chat ever. Now I told you I would do the, th the thread saver method. Yeah. So I've just done two regular back stitches. Let me zoom in and I'll show you the thread saver method. So I've just come down here, there. Okay. Now you come up here. So you're saving your thread. You like start over again. So you go down, forward, and you go forward, and then back. And then up here and forward. Now this is where I get lost because I didn't put all my lines on there, obviously. I missed one. So in the pattern here, I forgot to put this line in. Right there. Yeah, Wanda, so I haven't been watering because it's been raining like every day. And I'm afraid that if I water them, they're going to get too watery. Do you know what I mean? Like they're going to get too, like too drowned. Drowned. They're going to, dr to drown. That's what I mean. Guys, I'm good. I used to teach English. Did you know that? I was a second language I did. I think that's why I get mixed up because um, I can speak uh, some Chinese as well. And so oftentimes my brain will like put the sentence together in Chinese. I know, I'm just, I'm just stitching and talking. Not even showing you guys, ridiculous. Not off to a good start today, guys. Um, I live in England. So tomorrow Hope said, what state are you in? And I am not in any state. <laughs> Um, I'm from Ohio, though, so that's why I do not sound British, um, but that is also why I have a whacked out accent. 
because sometimes I will sound um, quite British and other times I just sound American. Wanda says, rainwater is the best. You should be good. Um, But you know, I found out the other day, my tomato plants, um, the containers that they're in, they don't have drainage. So now I have to go out and either take them out and drill some holes in the bottom or get a new pot that um, has holes in the bottom. It's just, it's all fun and games until you get a tomato plant and then you start caring about it, if it dies or if it lives, you know? Okay, so Veronica says, will it matter that when I stitch my brown edge, I'm stitching on the blue? No, of course not. I am as well. So if actually, if you see mine, the lines don't really, they don't really line up very well. Um, don't forget to give it a tug and um, where it's curvy, do the curvy things, you know, push up or push down. Yeah, that will really help. Now with the thread saver method, you're only going over your stitches um, on the back, every other one. Whereas on the regular back stitch, you're going back and back and back. So actually, the thread saver method saves you thread. Yeah. Whereas this one, you're using koi a bit. So I really only use the thread saver method if um, I need to save my thread. <laughs> So if I'm getting to the the very end and I think, oh my gosh, I just want to finish this one thing, um, then I'll, you know, try and save my thread that way. And it's the same with satin stitch. When we get to the satin stitch day, you can do the exact same thing um, with satin stitch and do a thread saver method of that as well. So there's that. Okay, we've just got one more little one here to do. And then we'll be done. Now, some people use um, the whipped back stitch to do like a candy cane um, effect. So imagine that you do the back stitch and then you use a different color to whip it and you get that striped candy cane look. Uh, that's quite nice. I'm not sure it would work in this situation because obviously we just want it to be a line. Um, but obviously, if you like it, do it. You know? Just like there's no wrong colors. If you want to like not do the stitch that I say or had planned, um, shame on you. You should be following the directions. No, I'm just kidding. Um, then do it. If you're like, oh, I really want to do this stitch for this plant, do it. Like, I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, they didn't pay attention. They don't like those stitches that I chose. Like, no, I don't care. I had someone message um, a couple of stitch longs ago and go, oh my gosh, I changed some of the stitches. And so I didn't want to post it on Instagram because I was afraid that you would get mad at me. <laughs> no. Like, do your own thing if you want to. I hope this was the right choice, this light color. I think it'll be good. Now, the other thing with whipped backstitch is that because we're using six strands and we're doing the backstitch and then we're going over it again and whipping it, so it's almost like 12 strands. So it does stick up off the fabric, yeah, whereas the regular six strands lays pretty flat. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you wanted to have a more flat edge or not have it stick up so much, like be raised, um, then of course you could use three strands. 
and then whip it, and then it would be like six strands. So there's always that. L Mint says, one of my favorite things is how you encourage us to choose what we feel comfortable doing. Definitely. This isn't like, you know, a class where like you have to get the right answer, like math class, where like two plus two is always four. There is no other answer. Like there's loads of different ways to do all of these stitches and there's loads of different colors you could choose and there's loads of different stitches that you could choose. So a lot of people say like, how do you know which stitch to choose? Like sometimes I follow my gut. Sometimes I just think I cannot be arsed to do that. So I'm just going to do a different one. You know, like I don't want to do that stitch today. So I'm just going to choose a different one. Whoa, that's way too big. Calm yourself. Yeah, so like you could fill something with French knots if you wanted to. But on that day, if I think, oh, I don't feel like doing French knots today, then I won't. You know? Because it's your pattern. You can do what you want with it. Let's just go a little bit into this one. So that when I go over it, so when we go to do this plant here, this will be completely behind it. Yeah? Now let's go back and whip it and we'll be done. Now with this stitch along, most of the days uh, will be one entire plant and not necessarily one stitch by itself. Okay. Now what I mean by that is like one day we'll do this one. One day we'll do this little group. One day we'll do these here. Yeah. So we might be using more than one stitch on one day. Um, so don't feel like, oh, this is so overwhelming. You can always just do a little bit and come back later and do the next bit. All of them are saved. You are not going to be behind. Don't worry. Please don't worry. Um, if there is ever one that requires a lot more stitching than other ones, for example, in my uh, colored in picture, yeah, this one had a bunch of different colors and then also a different color outline. So I'll probably save that one to do it on like a Thursday or a Friday so that you guys have the weekend um, to work on it a bit more. And then you won't feel so like, oh my gosh, I only have one day to get this done, you know? Um, tomorrow, Hope said, what are you stitching this onto? It's going to be beautiful. Uh, so if you look at the uh, Sea Life prep video, um, I gave a bunch of different ways that you can like add a bit of pizzazz to your embroidery. Um, and one of the ways was watercolor paint. So this is just white cotton fabric, plain white cotton fabric. You can see the edge here, just, just white. And then we did watercolor painting um, in the video. So you can do it with straight up watercolor paints or you can soak some markers, like if you have kids or if you just like to color like me, um, you can soak just a regular Crayola like any kind of washable marker uh, in water. It takes about two days and all of the excess color of the marker will go out into the water. So you make your own watercolors. I used to do it in Shanghai when I taught art there because we didn't really have a lot of money to like always get new materials. So we would take all of our old markers, like when they didn't have very much life left in them, and then we'd have um, just jars and put all of the blues in one pot and all the greens in another pot, and then we'd make our own watercolor paint there, and then you just put the lid on the jar when it's done, and then you've got watercolor paint that you can paint with. Eco-friendly, you know? So this is what we've got so far. That's it for today. That's all we're doing. That's it. That's the stitch along. <laughs> so yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. 
this looks like it could have been pulled a little bit tighter because I can still see it's twisty a bit, you know? Um, but it gives that nice little like a rope feel. Um, and then when we put the other things on top of it, it's going to look like all of these plants are sitting on top of the seabed. So it'll be really cool. Um, as always, please take photos of your progress and tag me at the Barmy Fox. The bar right here, the Barmy Fox. Um, and then I will repost it into my stories. You can also hashtag the Barmy Fox S A L, like S A L. Uh, and then your post will be added to, you know, the Barmy Fox S A L hashtag. So that's cool. Uh, in your stories, make sure. Let me just do it on the paper. It goes like this. That's an R, okay? When you do it in your stories, you need to make sure that the name comes up and there's a line under it, okay? Sometimes it's, um, if you go to like mention, if you swipe up from the bottom. I'm saying this because the last time I had a lot of people say, I've been tagging you and you haven't been reposting. Like, why do you not like mine? No, it's because I don't get the tags. So if it doesn't have a line underneath of it, then it won't tag me. Or you can swipe up from the bottom and there's a little thing that goes at and it says mention, I think. And it's like a button like this. If you click that, then you can do it and it comes up as a box like that. Drawings, 100% mine, okay? So don't steal them. I mean these drawings, like the, the boxes and everything. But also please don't steal them. <laughs> Guys, I'm in a state today. Oh, I'm telling you, it's, it's the rain. It's got me all funky. So have a lovely day. It is Monday. Um, I'm getting some boxes delivered today. Some new pens for the kits. Um, I have some hoops to do. And we're getting an exercise bike delivered today. I'm so excited. But it's meant to come today at some point. So I'm hoping that it's early because if it needs some kind of um, assembly, then I would like to, to do that, you know, like when David is at school. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Don't forget to tag me at the Barbie Fox. Don't forget to hashtag the Barbie Fox S-A-L. Please like and comment on other people's stitching because it's a community. We're all doing this together. So we need you. Okay. We need you to do this. <laughs> so enjoy and I'll talk with you later. Bye.